Hi, I'm Wyatt Gaynor and welcome back to Nauset News. Pasta Dinner Fundraiser. The class of 2019 is hosting a pasta dinner in the cafeteria in March from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. There will also be a silent auction with some amazing prizes available, such as a visit to the State House and lunch with Senator Julian Sear. Tickets are $7 for adults and $4 for kids to attend. Tickets can be bought at lunch or at school sporting events. Freshman health screenings. Vision, hearing, scoliosis, and another new screening will take place for all freshmen on February 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Any parent or guardian or student who would like to opt out of the screening, please contact the school nurse by February 5th. That is it for the announcements, and now on to this week's lineup. Top Story will be done by Isabel Merle and Jordan Auer. The High Five by Abby Wright, interviewing a talented swimmer and diver, Delaney Smith. Things to Do by Abby Wright and Tori Shee again. Talent by Tom Dudzik. Sports by Abby Wright and Tori Shee. Political Spotlight by Jack Auer. Break Room by Andrew Evans and Nigel Diamond as always. Fashion Tip by Nicole Shealy. Student Council by Isabel Merle. And lastly, The Health Tip by Jack Auer. I'm Wyatt Gaynor and now onto your top story. Hello, I'm Jordan Auer and this week I have your top story. Today I'll be talking to Officer DeAngelis about safe driving conditions in the winter for student drivers. Let's go talk with her. What are some safety tips that you have for new drivers in winter conditions? So especially the way the weather is today, some key tips is to just slow down, take your time, be patient, keep your lights on at all times and anticipate, um, especially like if you're turning corners, coming to a stop sign and stuff, don't try to slam on your brakes at the last minute because you'll end up sliding. And how can students take caution ahead of time to prepare for driving in winter conditions? So same thing is just make sure that you're you know driving slowly, anticipate that something's going to happen, anticipate that someone might have to stop quickly. You know you don't want to be following too close with anyone because that's where a lot of times what we see is a lot of rear end or accidents happening. And while many drivers may know this, many student drivers can may not. Can you tell us the difference between driving on snow and driving on black ice? So black ice, obviously a lot of times you don't realize there's black ice, but a misconception is a lot of people think is once you're sliding is to steer the other way. You actually want to, if you're sliding, is to steer into the slide. And I know that's, that's very difficult a lot of times. I know a lot of student drivers will practice that. The snow, you just want to make sure that, again, that you're going at a reasonable speed and reasonable, you know, a lot of times you'll see like on Route 6 in East Ham that's 40 miles per hour, doesn't mean that still applies in these increment weather um, conditions. So if you just want to, again, just slow down, don't follow someone too close, don't be on your cell phone or any other distractions. You really want to just take your time. It's going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Okay, and I have one final question. If students do end up getting in an accident, should there be anything in their car that will help them in a the moment? So first of all, any type of accident, someone should end up reporting. Um, move off to the side of the road, um, it, unless it's a, a real, real serious accident or someone's injured, then you just want to stay where you are. If it's a minor fender bender, try to move off to the side of the road. Put your hazards on. Um, make sure your phone's charged. That's the best time that you obviously want to call 911 and, and report it. Um, anything else in your car? Um, you know, it, it depends if you have like a sign or anything, but hopefully for the majority there's a, enough people around and your phone is working in that, in that area. Okay, well thank you very much, Officer D'Angelos. I'm Jordan Auer and this has been your top story. Hello, I'm Isabel Merrill and I'm here with this week's Student Council Report. The Council has been busy at work planning for the MASC Conference, which will be March 7th through March 9th. The MASC Conference is a meeting of all of the student councils in Massachusetts. Here, councils go to learn leadership schools to take back to their councils. Each council is responsible for assembling a book of excellence. This is a book consisting of all of the activities and events the council has participated in so far this year. The members have also been busy fundraising for the conference. Catch members of the council at the Orleans Stop and Shop on Saturday, February 3rd. The members will be holding a raffle for a gift basket full of local gift cards. On your way out from buying Super Bowl snacks, stop by their booth and buy some raffle tickets. I'm Isabel Merle. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Hi, I'm Tori Shee. And I'm Abby Wright. With this week's Things to Do. With winter in full swing, there are a lot of activities to be doing inside to stay warm. 
Saturday, February 3rd from 6 to 8 at Jake Rooney's Restaurant in Harwichport is Jake's Piano Bar. Sunday, February 4th at the Brewster Ladies Library at 2 p.m. is the Bart Wiseman Klezmer Swing Group. Monday, February 5th at 10 a.m. is Beginner Line Dancing at the Harwich Community Center. Thursday, February 8th at the Wellfleet Preservation Hall at 6 p.m. is a movie showing about salmon fishing in the Yemen. Friday, February 9th from 4 to 8 is Bowie's and Burlap Winter Market at the Depot in West Barnstable. Finally, Saturday, February 10th, from 5 to 9 at Mashpee High School, is a Dancing for a Cure 5K dance marathon. Despite the weather being cold and snowy these next few weeks, there are a lot of fun activities to be doing around Cape Cod to stay warm and busy. Now to Abby with some new movies to watch. Here are some new movies that you and your family can go see this week. First, Black Panther is rated PG-13 and runs 2 hours and 15 minutes. This movie follows Chala, the king of Wakanda, who is drawn into conflict when a powerful enemy appears. Faced with danger, Chala, aka Black Panther, must rally his allies to save his people and the world. 94% of Google users enjoyed this movie, and most reviews are absolutely glowing. Next, Forever My Girl is rated PG and runs 1 hour and 44 minutes. This movie follows a music superstar who reunites with his first love, realizing the steep price that he paid for success after leaving her at the altar eight years earlier. 91% of Google users enjoyed this movie, and it received a 6 out of 10 on IMDb. Finally, Den of Thieves is rated R and runs 2 hours and 20 minutes. A leader of an elite police, police unit and a gang of ex-military lawbreakers must come together in this movie as they attempt to stop a group of criminals making a heist of the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. 87% of Google users enjoyed this movie, and it received a 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb. I'm Abby Wright. And I'm Tori Shee. And this has been this week's Things to Do. Hi, I'm Tom Dudzik with this week's Talent Search, and I'm with Joshua Devlin. And today we're going to be interviewing Josh on the batch that he has built. All right, Josh, how long did it take you to make? So uh, this bench here, made out of ash, took me about, I'd say maybe eight to nine work days, which was about two, maybe three weeks. Looks like you got a lot done in two three weeks. I am um, so still going to finish here, and then I'm going to paint it off, put yeah. some finish on it. Uh, so what, it up. what were the biggest challenges you faced? Um, I would definitely say it was getting the uh, all the joints. Like, if you look in the back here, i walk by position as for you. Right here, we had to make a horizontal and diagonal cuts along to get this piece to fit perfectly with this post here. And, uh, yeah, I would say that that was the most challenging aspect of uh, this project. Uh, Josh, how did you come up with the design? Well, um, my father, who was part of um, Troop 76, uh, the East Ham Boy Scouts troop, actually helped back in the um, late 80s, helped make a um, like a lifeguard tower by um, Wiley Beach. Yep. So I thought, you know, why don't I make a bench? Because, you know, why not, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, it sure did come out good, and I hope to see what the final product looks like with the paint and the finish on it. And uh, I'm Tom Dunzik, and this has been your talent search of the week. Hi, I'm Nicole Sheely, and this is your fashion tip. Today I'm going to give you some tips on transitioning from winter to spring fashion. Spring is just around the corner, and it's a great time to start transitioning your wardrobe. Slowly start adding bright colors into your outfits. Adding bright colored accessories like a pink scarf or cherry red shades to an all-black outfit says, I'm ready for spring. Definitely bring your black leggings on this transition to spring. You can pair them with a shirt dress and cute flats for a cute spring outfit. Swap out a heavy coat for a lighter and brighter spring jacket. Try a colorful coat to cheer up your whole look. Two spring's key trends this season are big earrings and nautical stripes. I'm Cole Sheely and that was this week's fashion tip. Hello, I'm Jack Iron. and welcome to this week's edition of Health Tip. On this edition, we'll be focusing on how to sleep better. First, the secret to getting good sleep every night is for you to sleep eight to nine hours a night. If you get that many of hours of sleep, you'll function better the next day. Also, keep a regular sleep schedule. Set a regular bedtime. Go to bed at the same time every night. Also, wake up at the same time every day. If you're getting enough sleep, you should wake up naturally without an alarm. Also, in order to boost melatonin production, turn off your television and computer. Many people use the television to fall asleep or relax at the end of the day, 
but the TV actually stimulates the mind. Also, don't read from a backlit device at night, such as an iPad. And when it's time, make sure the room is dark. You'll sleep better. Make your bedroom more sleep friendly. Keep your room cool at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll sleep better. And eat right and get regular exercise. Stay away from big meals at night, especially fatty foods, and cut down on caffeine. Coffee won't, make you help, won't help you sleep. This has been this week's Health Tip with Jack Hour. Thank you, and goodbye. Hi, I'm Abby Wright. I'm here with your High Five Student of the Week. Um, she's a freshman on the Nauset swim team and is the only diver. Um, she trains off Cape and has recently broken the school record and qualified for state, so this is Delaney Smith. Uh, Delaney, where do you train? UMass Dartmouth. Oh, cool. So, what is your background in diving and were you ever a gymnast? Yeah, I was a gymnast and I was training level 9 until I quit. So, what do you think are your best dives? Um, my forward one and a half and my inward one and a half. So, what dives for you do you think are the hardest? Definitely my two, forward two and a half. And what's hard about it? Uh, just having to mentally go for it. Gotcha. So, um, what are you looking forward to most about the state championships? Um, definitely getting to see all my friends that I do club with who go to different high schools. Cool. And um, what did you enjoy most about being on the swim team this year? Uh, making new friends. Cool. So, this has been your High Five Student of the Week. Here's your high five. Thank you. And thank you for watching NASA News. You're watching Break Room, a show that makes lanyards look like a good idea. Substitution from ah and 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 yes and, yes it's yes. Andrew not that hard to pronounce and 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 Andrew and and Andrew uh, mm, just call me Sean Sean there you go Sean yes I'm Sean what do you need I need you to take this to Missile Branch it's the attendant slip very careful. There's a blizzard out there, as you can clearly see by the window, but... Do you want me to go out there? No, I want you to go to the room next over, to Mr. Castellan. Oh, okay, that's that, easy. It was a joke. Oh. Take this, deliver it, out of my sight. I have substitute things to do. Sure now. I might have to reshoot that part.
and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. I have a, a substitute checklist. Oh, okay. Thank you. What about Johnny Smith? Is he here today? Oh, yeah, but did, did they forget to check him in? Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to call and check. You could just call this whole time? Yeah, you guys could have called. You didn't have to come down here. Hi, I'm Abby Wright. And I'm Tori Shea with this week's sports. This week, the Nauset girls basketball team beat Falmouth in ACL action on January 26th in Falmouth, 42-25. Skylar Sanderson had 17 points, while Corinne Marest had 7, and Reagan Meehan had 6. The boys also had a big win, beating Falmouth at home on Friday, 65-64. It was a real nail-biter. I was there. I know you were there too, Tori. It was a really good game. Playing well was Charlie Campbell, Spencer Jones, Jeremy Poyant, and Chad Edwards. The hockey team lost to Falmouth at home on Saturday, January 27th, 3-0. Chase home made 25 stops in the net despite the loss. And in girls hockey, the girls also lost to Falmouth on Saturday, 7-1. Now over to Tori with the other teams. As for indoor track, senior Madiket Nobly took first place in the one mile to highlight the coaches' invitational on Saturday, January 28th at the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston. Her time was 5 minutes and 11 seconds. Tara Ellard placed 7th in the same event with a time of 5 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, freshman Shaylin Risk was 15th in the 1,000 meter run, while Isabel Nobly was 20th in the 2 mile. For the boys, their best finish was 6th place in the 4x200 relay. Owen Wilcox, Tate Sidewan, Curtis Moore, and Shavar Champagne combined in the relay. On to Nauset swimming. The Nauset swim team split with Bridgewater, Raynham, on January 26th at home. The boys won 94 to 74, while the girls lost 87 to 82. Hannah Burnell, Coleman Norton, and Jack Johnson won two events apiece, while individual winners included Gabby Didoli, Tanner Cornell, and Carlisle Nash. The team will be sending many swimmers to states this year and are expected to do very well in many of the relays. I'm Tori Shee. And I'm Abby Wright. And that was this week's sports. Hello, I'm Jack Hour, and welcome to this week's Political Spotlight. It was another busy week in Washington, D.C., so let's jump right into it. First, President Trump gave his State of the Union on Tuesday night. Even though at the time of his report, Trump had not yet given his address, Trump was expected to convey the theme of building a safe, strong, and proud America. Additionally, Trump was presumed to tout his accomplishments, which include appointing a Supreme Court Associate Justice, Neil Gorsuch, and passing a massive tax reform bill. Policy-wise, Trump was believed to focus on five areas, jobs in the economy, infrastructure, immigration, trade, and national security. Joe Kennedy III, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Massachusetts, gave the official Democratic response to Trump's speech. Speaking of state officials, Governor Charlie Baker is up for re-election this year, but the governor should not be worried about his prospects of winning a second term. As of this month, Baker is the most popular governor in the United States with a 74% approval rating. This is remarkable, especially since Baker is a Republican in a highly Democratic state. Why is Baker so popular? Bipartisanship, which is very needed in our nation's capital. This has been this week's Political Spotlight with Jack Auer. Thank you, and stay informed. Hi, I'm Parker Cameron, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Human Rights Gallery, where they have teamed up with all the art classes to express the, six, uh, the story of Martin Luther King through art, and we're going to leave you with the footage of it. So here we go.